video 10 then to go with the um, uh, intensive and extensive uh, farming system notes. It's just the last little bit to go with it about uh, changing from one system to another and, and, and monoculture. Um, one of the problems with uh, going from intensive to extensive systems, there are better extensive systems nowadays that can produce a bit more. Uh, for instance, with crops, although um, we've uh, we've realised that um, pest uh, different using different chemicals, fertilisers, pesticides can be damaging to the environment. We sort of like reached a compromise now where some has to be used, but they're put on in such a controlled manner that maybe not thought of as intensive farming systems anymore, more as um, an intermediate between the two. However, you've got problems with going from intensive to extensive. In intensive, you've got these all these sheds that you've invested money in, and suddenly you're not using them. The amount of labour suddenly um, will uh, decrease. It puts a lot of uh, people out. And all the equipment that you used for the intensive systems suddenly has to be converted to equipment for the extensive systems. So a lot of things get made redundant. The there are costs from tra to transferring from one to another. And with the problems with uh, farming nowadays, where farms don't have a lot of money um, uh, due to a lot of the issues that they've, um, uh, the, the, the less support that they get nowadays, um, it's very difficult to go from an intense, uh, intensive to an extensive uh, system. So to address these issues, uh, to promote extensive, we need more systems that, uh, extensive systems that produce more food, if it's possible, um, um, although <laughs> the, it, they, they contradict each other, extensive systems tend to produce less food, the human population, we need that demand for food, can we find a way to get extensive systems to produce more food? Probably not. Um, and also as well, we need to promote this movement from intensive to extensive. Very difficult for individuals to do it on their own. So the last little bit to do with these notes is monoculture then. Now monoculture is the production of one crop over a large, large area. Um, Small fields used to be uh, used for farming, um, and the, the problem associated with that is that machines that were used in these fields had to be smaller. The um, hedgerows as well would uh, suck up water, nutrients from around the edges, they would overshadow the crops on the edges, and it's surprising how much you may think that, well, it's only a few metres maybe or, you know, uh, uh, several metres of, of light that it's taken away and you're going to have smaller. But when you consider that if you've got a whole field and all the way around that edge is the, the hedgerow, it can take a lot of uh, produce away from that system. So what's happened is that those small fields have been essentially knocked into one um, so that there is only a hedgerow, sometimes not even a hedgerow, maybe they've been uh, cut down around the edge. Um, but you've got problems with monoculture systems. Um, the one crop being grown over a large area means um, animals won't be, uh, there won't be as many different species that are adapted to feed there. So, um, for example, you might have a field mouse growing in there, uh, growing in there, breathing in the in the crops, and I've certainly seen them darting around uh, in in the the grass fields. But um, other small uh, rodents, uh, for example, you wouldn't have a squirrel in the middle of the field, whereas if there was hedges nearby, it might be darting around there. So um, uh, you have a lot less. Um, consumers, primary consumers, all those insects and things. You've got a lot less secondary consumers and so on. And so with these fewer hedges and one crop, you're going to have a lot less biodiversity. Another issue is, particularly with very large monoculture fields, um, erosion of soil. The um, winds can blow then, uh, the, the hedgerows would act as windbreakers and prevent uh, wind from building up too fast speed. But in some fields in America, where they are massive in size, much, much bigger than the ones in the UK, um, this the, water, the wind can build up a massive speed and actually erode soil faster, wash it into waterways, 
and therefore um, uh, damage uh, the, the fields a lot more. Um, it can take away nutrients and so therefore more fertilizers are needed and then those fertilizers can be washed into waterways if they if rain leaches through it and it can damage the waterways through eutrophication like I've discussed in the other video.